Hey guys, in today's news, I've picked a couple of articles from the last couple of weeks that are finance related. The first one is an article which goes over a report which basically says how financial illiterate we all are as Australians. The second one is about mortgage prison or debt traps. Let's get into it. So, okay, here's the article here, lack of financial literacy, a vicious cycle as advice becomes more unaffordable for Australians. So obviously this article is about financial advice. So let's take a couple of lines from here. News this week that more than one third of Australians are financially illiterate will only hurt those seeking financial advice, professional advice. Yeah, that makes sense because they're not smart enough to actually seek out financial advice. One third of Australians, that doesn't surprise me. Let's make sure this report is legit because um, there is a lot of reports out there in the in the wide world, which uh, kind of the media paints as being kind of in the middle when really they're not. They're, they're paid for by um, some sort of organization. So a great example is, um, you know, during the Royal Commission, the big four banks or the banking sector, the Australian Banking Association paid for a report called the Sedgwick Report um, that got posted around the media um, like it was like it was basically um, a non-partial report painting mortgage brokers in a bad light and then they forced upon us a lot more regulation, which is great fun dealing with all that extra red tape. So let's have a look here. So basically we can see that this report's done by a university. So you'd assume it's relatively non-partial. As our financial lives become even more complicated and technology, technology advancements have increased, access to financial products ranging from credit cards, buy now, pay later, crypto, direct shares and much more. It has never been more important to take meaningful steps to addressing poor financial illiteracy. Yeah, I think that quote kind of nailed it on the head, really. It's just too technical. It's just too hard. And the thing I want to point out is that we've kind of lived this Goldilocks period, which I always talk about, where we've it's allowed us to be very easy with money and, you know, easy come, easy go. And that's not necessarily the reality. So I think going forward, people are going to unfortunately learn the hard way that their financial illiteracy is um, going to be a hamstring on their future finances. And I think they're going to learn it when it's too late, which is the actual scary thing. I found that around 43% of young people aged 18 to 24 years reported they could not meet their personal debt obligations. That's probably, I don't know, and that doesn't sound like it surprises me to to be honest like young people always have no money you know their priorities if they're anything like me was um partying and the debts come second so it makes sense that they would be they there would be a high amount of people struggling to pay their debts at that age to curb this mr adino has advocated financial literacy be taught in schools as a subject as core curriculum at least from the beginning of high school through to our senior years. Um, this has been said by a lot of people over many years. Clearly our government's just stopped listening to us and it's not going to happen. So the responsibility or the onus for education should not be put on the educational system. This is a responsibility we all need to take. And I feel that's a bit of a cop out. And that probably makes sense because at the end of the day, this, this is from a financial planner and people that are more educated with their finances will pay for financial advisors. So um, no troubles there. Uh, basically, that's confirming what a lot of us already know. Australians are financial illiterate. Fin Australians are financially illiterate. As I said, you need to take responsibility for your own finances because times aren't going to be the same as what they were before. They're going to be increasingly difficult. And if you want to avoid the increasingly difficult part of it, then you need to take responsibility. All right, this article was from two weeks ago now. If there's a double interest rate rise this week, more borrowers will become mortgage prisoners. Ooh, scary. Mortgage prisoners. 
Oh, I actually saw this one. There was a video on ABC. These two sisters basically took out a home loan at um, whatever the cheap rates were, around 2%, and now they're struggling. So the problem here is that a lot of people basically expected 2% interest rates to last forever, when the reality is is 5% is the normal long-term interest rate. So the problem here is that a lot of people are now mortgage prisoners, which basically means that they cannot refinance their debt to cheaper repayments so they can manage their home loan repayments better. And they're now put into hardship because they have to keep on paying their home loan. Um, it sounds pretty simple. I mean, rates aren't even back up to 5% yet, home loan interest rates, which is the average. So it tells you something about the psychology of the people um, and the media that that kind of have, have lived through these cheap interest rate times. Okay, so it just goes in about this scenario, you know, typical media thing, you know, dream home, blah, blah, blah. Now we're in hardship. Um, we'll probably have to sell the house if we can't keep up with the repayments. It's really scary for us, is the quote there. Um, well, that's, unfortunately, that's sad, but that's a part of reality. If you can't keep up the repayments, um, you can't keep the house. What's interesting here is there's two two sisters buying it and the, the debt is 360 grand. So um, it's 180 grand each. So it's not exactly a massive debt. Um, so immediately it feels to me, this is just kind of a media thing where they're, you know, they've got this sub story on. Um, now they, they go into a few reasons here of why people can be mortgage prisoners. So I think this is, this is important to go over. So more Australians in negative equity as house prices fall. So what that actually means is that if your property drops below what the mortgage is, what you owe on the property, then you're in negative equity. That is actually a really dangerous position to be in if you are in an industry where if a recession comes and um, unemployment starts rising and you're in an unskilled industry, this can actually be a massive problem can, because it can force you into bankruptcy. And in my opinion, that is the biggest problem that can happen. Um, fortunately at the moment, our unemployment is at pretty much at record lows. So um, those negatives are not a high probability to pay off just yet. So the next thing they go into um, with regards to mortgage prison or, or a debt trap as I like to refer to it, is Australians on low fixed rates could struggle to refinance. This is also a genuine problem because a lot of the time what happens is the banks do a bit of a sneaky on you when you roll, when you come over, when you come out of your fixed period. And generally what happens is you're on a quite a high principal and interest interest rate. So actually this be, can become a massive burden because you're used to paying potentially 2% and now you might have to pay four and a half or 5%, depending on how high the interest rates go up, maybe even higher. So actually that can push people into hardship. And again, people could find it hard to refinance. And there are situations out there where people just don't have the income to refinance, but they're on an interest rate with their current lender that's probably a percent too high and the lender are playing hardball and they don't want to decrease the interest rate to something that's around normal for the market. There's a couple of other points this article goes into, which I'll quickly go over as well. Um, if you're at risk of a mortgage trap, then you should probably refinance before it's too late. Um, at the end of the day, I'm saying this already, where people just can't refinance. Um, unfortunately, the people in these positions are not going to be reading these articles or watching these sorts of videos. They're going to work themselves right into hardship. And then when they try and get help, they're going to be so far gone that it's very hard for them to come back. And that's actually a sad reality of what could happen um, from this situation. Um, the pandemic housing booms left more Australians in traps. So the article just goes on to basically say there, there is a bit of a trap there where the where the governor, Phil Lowe, said that we're going to keep interest rates low till 2024. I think that's a bit of a cop out as well, because at the end of the day, like I said, the average interest rates are 5%. So you should be budgeting for at least that. 
the other thing here is that the government have played a hand in is is the home builder. So obviously we got into a recession, into a well, it was a recession, but also the pandemic, and the government wanted to stimulate. What they did was they basically said anyone who wants to build a property will give you twenty five grand. Um, I think that was for a period of six months or something like that. Obviously, those sorts of incentives have pushed people to rush into the market. Um, I think that's a bit of a cop out as well. Like I said, your responsibility is your responsibility. Um, you're probably going to get sick of me saying responsibility because I'm a big believer that that we need to take our own responsibility. Things are going to get tougher, and that's just a reality of things. Um, hopefully, people are watching these videos till now because. One of the funny things about me having these sorts of opinions on um, on the state of the economy, which pe a lot of people say they're negative, is that people just turn a blind eye to it. Um, unfortunately, if you turn a blind eye to it and you realize it too late, i.e. when you're forced to realize it because you're in such a bad position, it's probably too late. So again, take responsibility for your own fi financial future, take steps to protect yourself, take steps to put yourself in a position where hardship can be put cushioned because the reality is, is, is or I should say the probabilities are that things are not going to be as easy the next 10 years as what they were the last 10 years. I hope you really like this news article. If you've got any questions or anything, or you want me to comment on anything else in the news or any topics, please let us know. Cheers.